Hello guys, in this video we'll start to learn program control instruction. First, the jump and label will be explained. These two instructions are used together. Also, we will see what the no operation does. Actually, it doesn't do anything. After that, we'll see how subroutine instructions can be used to repeat a program many times in our programs. Then I'll explain the TND, MCR, and interrupts instructions briefly. Because these are simple. Then I will explain how a program can be executed based on a specified event. After that, we'll learn the AFI instruction. That's simple. I will continue program control instructions with sequential instructions in the next video. Then an automatic warehousing project will be done using sequential instructions and factory I.O. software. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content I have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content. I will be posting through the channel. Alright, in this video, I will use this virtual PLC station. I have configured that inside Arslogix 5000 software. First, let's go to the program control instructions tab. As you see, here is the jump instruction. This instruction and also the label instructions work together. First, I must create a label. Now, I can select it for the jump instruction. These instructions were explained, when we were using Arslogix 500 software. Anyway, these two instructions skip portions of ladder logic. Let me modify the program a little. Between inserted jump and label instructions, here, I can add other rungs and use any instruction. Also, I can use an especial instruction from the program control instruction tab. The no operation instruction. This instruction won't do anything, but it will remove the empty rung error, from my program. Well, based on the program, if the jump instruction is enabled by this contact, then, it skips to the referenced label instruction, and the controller continues executing from here, so, the controller won't execute this part of program. If the jump instruction is disabled, it does not affect ladder execution. The next instruction is JSR, jump to subroutine. If you remember, we used this instruction to call another routine in previous videos. The JXR instruction, jump to an external routine, works like the JSR, but it executes an external routine. Note that, this instruction is only supported by the SoftLogix 5800 controllers. So let me skip it. Next instructions are return, and subroutine, which are usually used inside a subroutine. So. These instructions related to subroutines executing. Let's see an important usage of these instructions. Suppose we need to calculate coefficient of variation, many times in the PLC program. That's defined as the ratio of the standard deviation to the average value of some numerical data. This parameter is widely used in analytical chemistry, and also commonly used in fields such as engineering or physics. I can write a program in four rungs to calculate this parameter. Well, here are two choices. Repeat its program which includes four rungs, or, write its program inside a subroutine, and call the subroutine as many as need. Naturally, I select the second choice to calculate the CV parameter. So, the CV program won't be repeated in my program, but it can be used many times. Now. I create this subroutine, and call that using the inserted JSR instruction.
Until now, we used the JSR instruction without any input or return parameters. Now, the CV subroutine must get a some numerical data, and return their CV value. So, let me open the program tags table to define some tags. Here, I define two arrays with five elements to store numerical data, and two tags with real data type to store coefficient of variations. Well, let's back to the main routine. First, I want to calculate the CV parameter of stored numerical data on the first array and store it the calculated CV on the related tag, CV1. So, the inserted JSR instructions send stored data on the array 1 to the CV subroutine and store its result on the CV1. Let's go to the CV subroutine. Here I write a program to calculate the CV parameter. First, I use the SBR instruction to get array1 data, and store it on an array like A. Now, let me use the STD instruction to calculate the standard deviation of a numerical data in the first dimension of the array A, and store the result on a tag like STD. Remember my array tags have 5 elements. Similarly, let me use the average instruction, to calculate the average of numerical data. Now, in the next rung, let me use a deviation instruction, to use these results, to calculate the coefficient of variation. Now, I must determine which parameter must be returned, so, in the next rung, I use the return instruction, and select this tag as the program result. Alright, this program calculates coefficient of variation. There is only one small problem in my program that I noticed after testing. Here, number 5 must be entered in the length field, not in the position field. Similar to the next instruction. Anyway. The coefficient of variation which was stored on this tag, will be returned and stored on the CV1 tag. Now, I can use the CV subroutine to calculate coefficient of variation for another set of numerical data, without write its program again. I only need to change its input and return parameters. Now, let's test the program. Well, I've forgotten to define this tag. Also, let me modify the previous problem, 
and download the program to my PLC. Well, the controller mode must be changed to program mode. Now, let me change numerical data on created array tags. Here, I enter five numbers close together on the first array. For the second array, I will use five numbers that are very different from each other. It's expected the coefficient of variation of the first numerical data will be less than the second numerical data on the second array. Now, both CV1 and CV2 are zero. Let me activate enable bits to use the CV subroutine to calculate CV1 and CV2. As you see, the CV1 value is less than the CV2. All right, I hope you have learned how a program can be written inside a subroutine and use that many times inside the main routine. I only need to change its input and return parameters. Now, let's see other instruction of the program control group. These instructions are simple. TND is a short form of the temporary end. When the controller scans a TND instruction, then the controller moves to the end of the current routine. The MCR instruction used in pairs, creates a program zone that can disable all rungs within the MCR instructions. The UID and the UIE instructions work together, to prevent a small number of critical rungs, from being interrupted by other tasks. These three instructions are related to sequential programming, I will explain and use them in the next video. Now, let's see how the event instruction works. It works like the JSR instruction, but it calls another type of program. Let me create a new task. Here, I write a name for the new task. In the type field, I select the event type. So, when the trigger conditions occur, the new task will be executed one time. Let me select this condition. Module input data state change. For this choice, I must determine a module tag too. Well, based on these settings, when the input module has any changes at its state, the new task will be executed one time. Note that, there are three modes for each task. The main task, which is usually used to write the PLC program, is in continuous modes, it is executed continuously. A periodic task will be executed periodically, and the event mode, which I am explaining that. Now, let me create a new program folder, and after that a new routine inside the new task, to write a simple program. All right, let me write a simple program inside this routine. Well, I have written the program and transferred that to the virtual controller. As you know, if I change any input address of the input output module, this program will be executed. So, based on the first rung, if I change any input address, the first digital output will be on, but if the first digital input is activated, the controller will turn off the digital output. The main point in this simulation is, the controller doesn't execute this program continuously. It executes this task and its program, if it detects any changes at the input addresses of this module. Now, let me create another task. Its type is the event2. But it will be executed only by the event instruction. Like the previous task or the main task, I can create a program folder, and also create a routine, for the new task. Well, inside this routine, I can write any program. But remember, this task and all its routine and program, 
will be executed only by an event instruction. So, let me add an event instruction inside the main routine of the main task. I hope you have understood what is an event task. Now, I can add the event instruction, to call an event task type. Let me use a one-shot instruction. So, based on the second rung, if I activate this contact, this task will be executed one time. Alright, the next instruction of the program control group is AFI, always false instruction. Now, this instruction will be executed based on this contact state. If I remove this contact, the controller will execute the JSR instruction always. But if an AFI instruction is used at the beginning, the controller won't execute the JSR instruction. Alright, all instructions of the program control group have been explained except these instructions which are related to sequential programming. In the next video, I will use this type of programming to do an automatic warehousing project with factory IO software. Thanks for watching my content. If you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.